Hello, I am Paul Erlinson. and I'm the Director of Product Support for Link Studio Technology. Today we're here at Source Distribution discussing our newest product, the Hilo. Um, Hilo is recently shipping. It is our newest converter product. The idea behind the Hilo was to produce a converter product that was of a more restricted channel count than our Aurora 8-channel and 16-channel interfaces. This was really designed with uh, those who intended to record or master that didn't need 8 or 16 channels but were perfectly well suited with a handful. It's a very, very versatile product, but I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, overall sound quality. Uh, we've done a number of innovative things. Rather than just merely recreate the audio quality of the Aurora, which is very highly regarded, uh, our engineers decided to not knock it up a notch and um, actually make the Hilo even better sounding than the Aurora was. One of the ways in which we did that was in very intensive um, attention to the analog front end and also by doubling up the converter chips for all the inputs and outputs. So for each channel of input, we use two ADCs. And for each channel of output, we use two uh, DACs. Uh, what you get out of that is you lower, lower the uh, distortion numbers and you increase the dynamic range. So the consequence is the finest sounding product that Lynx has produced to date. As with most of our products, we, we chose to innovate upon the most basic intention, uh, not just to have fewer channels, but to do something different, something that made it more useful, something that made it more adaptable in the future. Uh, all our products are really designed to be something that you're going to use for five, seven, ten years, not, uh, not something that's disposable and you toss it aside after a couple. Um, so first off, as far as the Aurora goes, the I.O. that's available uh, includes very high quality analog line ins, uh, line outs. Those are settable to uh, different consumer and professional levels with analog trims, the very highest quality, as well as trim pots for fine tuning. Uh, we also have completely independent monitor outs using quarter inch jacks out of the back. Uh, those are completely controllable via analog volume controls as well as digital. Uh, we also have an extremely high quality headphone jack. Um, this is one of the better sounding headphone amps uh, I've ever encountered. We use as our benchmark some, some units that sell for 1500 to 2000 as dedicated headphone amps. That was the uh, sound quality we were aspiring for with the design of ours. Uh, uh, there's also a number of digital formats. It supports AES-EBU digital, SPDIF coaxial, SPDIF optical, and the optical is also switchable to 8-channel, 8 8-at light pipe as well. Um, we have word clock in and out, and this is the first product that Lynx has manufactured that also has DC-powered uh, options, so you can use a battery pack for 9-volt DC operation. Um, one of the other things that's truly innovative about the product um, is that it's controlled by a touch screen. Um, this not only makes the operation much easier and more straightforward, it prevents us from needing to do an interface that has loads and loads of buttons in order to be flexible. It also makes it very adaptable. It can accommodate uh, a variety of users very easily and also can change over time through very simple to uh, install firmware updates. It's all driven by an FPGA that's completely configurable by our software engineers. So as you see, the first thing you'll notice when you fire it up is that there's a, a meter display. Uh, right now we're looking at the uh, analog VU meters. Um, one of the things that's unique to this form is that we can change the meter type just with the press of a button. Now we have Doro style linear meters. We can also pull up meters that show all of the I.O. that's available. I just went through a whole laundry list of I.O. This will show you what's happening on each of those inputs and outputs at any given moment. So really, really very useful. They're extremely accurate uh, and, as you can see, very, uh, very pleasant to look at, as it were. Um, now, the touchscreen has a, a great variety of utility. You can, of course, do things like setting the trim levels, setting the, the digital formats and so forth. There's a lot of channel status information, things that tell you the state of the unit. But the heart of it is this output mix routing page. This is where we can route any input signals and any combination of input signals to any output and control the volumes of any of those sources. So this is really where the Hilo becomes adaptable to the needs of the user and uh, conforms to a variety of contexts. So I like to talk a little bit about that and use this page as sort of an example of, of how it would be adapted to suit your needs. Uh, there's essentially six target markets for this product. The first two would be 
either a singer songwriter, uh, a recordist who's just recording one or two channels at a time in their own location or a small room, um, or a full fledged recording, multi track recording studio that uh, wishes to have two channels of extremely good, pristine conversion in addition to everything else that they have in the rack. So these are, as they would say, the money channels for vocals, overheads, something of that sort. Uh, in either of those cases, the routing capabilities within the Hilo are extremely flexible. You can do things like have multiple stems. Uh, let's say you have one pair of outputs be drums, one pair be uh, guitars, one bass and keyboards, one vocals. Uh, and then also have the line inputs be monitored as well. The, the recorder and the performer can completely control unique mixes with different levels and different combinations of sources that they're listening to at any given time. And it's very, very quick. It's a matter of just touching a button and you've enabled new sources that you can listen to. For controlling the levels, there's a rotary encoder uh, in this state. We can use it to control the output level or click a button, and now we're controlling the level of the source that's feeding that output. So uh, it's very, very flexible. This also works within the meter display. As we're watching meters, we're controlling the monitor out or the headphone out very quickly. Now, this is all analog level control. It's the highest quality available, uh, so you don't have to worry about losing resolution of the audio material when you're attenuating the signal at all. One of the other target markets for this product is mastering engineers. We made a, a fundamental change to the design of the product in response to feedback from some of the mastering engineers. So the Aurora's, or excuse me, the Helo's outputs, uh, the line outputs and the monitor outputs are completely independent. They have their own DACs and you can assign your own sources to them. So one of the typical sort of contexts of use is that a mastering engineer would use the line outputs to go through their signal processing change return that back into the line inputs, and then monitor the, the post-affected signal through the monitor outputs. You can do that as well as use inserts for the digital I.O. to enter that stream as well. And you can do, again, you know, multiple sources playing via USB from an OS X or Windows computer at the same time. Um, so it's very, very flexible. The headphone amp, again, is uh, suitable for the needs of a mastering engineer. It's high enough fidelity for, uh, for that context. And of course, the audio quality also for the line outputs and the monitor outputs are as well. The other context that's useful for this sort of uh, exemplary conversion is uh, audiophiles who use media servers in a home listening environment, very, very high-end, uh, accurate reproduction environments. Um, this is also a case where the, the routing flexibility can be quite useful. You can bring in a feed from an optical digital input from a receiver, send that to one room, take a USB play stream from your computer with iTunes or whatever, and send that to another room with completely independent volume control over each. Um, so really very, very flexible for that environment as well. I'd mentioned earlier the DC uh, battery capability to power the Hilo. This opens up the uh, market of field or remote recording. So it can be used out in the field as a recording device. Um, the other thing uh, that's worth noting about the display is that since it's upgradable in the field, uh, it has a lot of potential to adapt and change in time. So there's a number of uses for that that we'll see popping up as the product uh, continues to grow and develop. There's a number of things we could do as far as audio analysis tools and a lot of other ways in which we can adapt the product to specific contexts of use. So when you put it all together, it's a very valuable product for a wide variety of users uh, and also one that'll grow into the future. So we're, we're quite excited and hope that you are too.